Hey folks, how's it going? It's Mr. Murray coming to you with a video on polynomial division. So in this video, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down for you some important ideas behind how you divide polynomials. Um, in class, we learned how to use the area method or the box method to kind of reverse multiplication and turn it into division because um, we talked about how if we know the product that we get from the box and we know one of the numbers we multiplied, finding the other number that we multiplied is the same thing as doing division. Now, just for some quick vocabulary so that you're aware, the dividend is always the thing you're dividing into. The divisor is what you're dividing by, and the quotient is basically the answer that you get. Now, at the same time, sometimes you get something left over, and in that case, the remainder is part of that. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing again is we're gonna be thinking about the ideas behind division and how to use the box method to execute it. As with many of my videos, there will be problems for me to do, ones that I'll kind of slow down and, and ask you to help me out with, and then ones where I'll ask you to pause the video, try the solution, and then unpause and see what you get. All right, so I'm gonna start by going back to the basics and discussing long division. Now, we didn't talk specifically about polynomial long division in class, but essentially the box is, believe it or not, doing long division. So I'm going to show you how you would do long division. And if you want to use this method, that's completely valid as long as you get the correct answer. But I'm going to show it side by side with the box so you can see what's happening. So in a typical long division problem, what I would do is I would take n minus 6 and I would divide it into n squared minus n minus 29 in this example. Okay. And so what you usually do is you ask, okay, what do I need to multiply n by to get n squared? And what we know is it is n. n times n is n squared. And then we take this n and we multiply it by each of the terms in the divisor. n squared minus 6n. And what we do is we then take this thing and subtract it. And you'll notice that the, this leading term will always cancel. The trick here is we have negative n minus negative 6n. And that actually, believe it or not, subtracting the negative is where things get tricky. And as with division, you'll usually have something that will kind of come down. Right? Then we repeat the process. So what times n gives me 5n? The answer is 5. 5 times n is 5n. And I multiply through again, and I get 5n minus 30. And that leaves me with positive 1. And that is the remainder. And so how I would write this is I would say n squared minus n minus 29 divided by n minus 6 equals the quotient plus the remainder over what I am dividing by. Let's see how it would work with the box. So with the box, and the setup isn't always intuitive, I set my box up, and I know that I need to multiply n squared. This is what I need to get, and I know one of my sides is n minus 6. So as we learned, we're going to start by putting our leading term in the upper left. And I ask, what times n will give me n squared? And the answer is n. OK, and now because this is n, this needs to be negative 6n. So real quick, observe how we have this overlap. OK, and then I say, wait a minute. I need a total of negative 1n in my answer. So that must mean that I need to put 5n over here so that, remember, the like terms on the diagonals add up. And so if that's true, 
right? This needs to be plus five. So I get five times n equals five n. But then if this is plus five, five times negative six is negative 30. Again, you can see we got an overlap here. And now remember the tricky part here, you see the remainder comes out right away. I got to ask myself, well, what do I need to add to the 30 that I've gotten here to get negative 29? Now, sometimes you'll get, they'll be the same, in which case you have no remainder. But in this case, you actually will have a remainder. And by getting R alone, I find the remainder is one. So I state my answer, n squared minus n minus 29 over n plus five or n minus uh, six rather is equal to n plus five plus one over n minus six. So you can see that I actually really do get the same answer whether I do long division or whether I do the box method. So again, I encourage you to use whichever one you want. However, going forward in this video, what I'm going to be focusing on is the box method. And so remember, with the box method, we have two key patterns that we always want to think about. The first key pattern is that the leading term, okay, always goes in the upper left. And then the other thing we know is that you're always going to find like terms on the diagonals. Okay, and so by following these common patterns with the box, you can be really, really effective in your execution. Let's take a look at one that I'm going to do for you, and I'm going to just do the box method, so I'm actually going to make this go away. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw the line to begin the box, and I'm just going to start with a one by two box because I might not know the dimensions I need. What I know is that I need to fit x squared plus 5x plus 3 in the box. And I also know that one of the sides is going to be x plus 6. Now, eventually, if you haven't already, you'll build some intuition for how to set the box up. And if you haven't at this point, that's okay. Let's figure it out. So I know that I need to have x squared up here because the leading term, well, that's where it needs to go. Now, to get x squared, I know I need to have x up top, and that this makes it 6x. So I'm obviously not done here because I still have x's I need to deal with, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll expand the box, and I'll add another column to it because I'm not quite done yet. And if you want to do this method of just adding on as you go, that's okay. All right, so I've got 6x, and I know that the like terms are on the diagonals, meaning that these boxes here need to add up to 5x. So this needs to be negative x so that I get that effect. I get it to add up 6x minus 1x equals 5x. Okay, but wait a minute. If this is negative 1x, I have to have a negative 1 here. And then 1 times neg uh, 6 rather is negative 6. Okay, I can see that the constant in my box is not equal to the constant here. So I've got to ask myself, negative 6 plus what will give me 3? The answer is 9. So you've got to think about what do I need to add to the constant in the box to get the constant of the dividend? All right, so that leaves me with this answer. x minus 1, you start with what's on top of the box, the quotient, plus the remainder, 9 over x plus 6. Okay, please go back and rewind if kind of anything was confusing and you need further explanation or you kind of want to see it redone at your own pace. Otherwise, we will go ahead and move on to the next example. All right, so this one's going to get kind of more confusing, and I apologize for having this one there, but it's okay. We're dealing with a cubic, and one thing we do know is that the biggest power of x here is 3, and the biggest power of x here is 1, 
And it is actually true that if you take the biggest power of X in the dividend and divide by the biggest, uh, sorry, subtract the biggest power of X rather in the divisor, that's going to tell you the biggest power of X in the quotient. And that's actually helpful in terms of helping you think of the box. But if you didn't, that's okay. Let's start and say, um, well, what if it was a two by two? Okay. All right, so let's set this up. We know we have P minus five, that's what we're dividing by. So again, leading coefficient in the upper left. So if this is P cubed, I need this to be P squared. So P squared times P is P cubed. Now I've got P squared times negative five, negative five P squared. I know the P squareds are on the diagonals. So that's me, I need another negative five P squared so that these add up to negative 10 P squared. Now I put a negative five P because negative five P times P is negative five P squared. And now in this box, I put 25 P. I am gonna to need to add on to this box because it looks like I need to finish off here. So I have 25 P already and I need to get down to 20. So I need negative five P here, making this negative five. So negative five times P is negative five P. And now I do five times five or negative five times five, which is 25. I'm shooting for 26. So here I can see that I just need to add one to get to 26. So my answer is going to be P squared minus five P minus five plus one over P minus five. And remember your remainder is always that number that you get, usually it's gonna be a constant, over the polynomial that you're dividing by, the divisor, in this case, P minus five. Okay folks, so again, please go back, rewind and review anything if necessary. And then in a moment, we will move on to another example. All right, here's one for us to try. So similar idea. Now, if needed, again, I encourage you to go back to the last example and think about what the box looked like because the box in this particular situation is gonna be in some way similar to the box we just looked at. So first of all, let's think about how many rows is our box going to have based on our divisor. Our box needs to have two rows. So I'm going to start with a one. And now if you know the dimensions of the box already, go for it. But I know this box needs to have two rows, one for P and one for negative five. So what's going to go up here in this part? What are we going to put here, folks? This is going to be P cubed. Okay, so now we think about what times P gives me P cubed. It is P squared. Now, if I have P squared here, I know this box has to be negative five times P squared, which is negative five P squared. Do I need to expand the box? Yes, I should expand it. So let's expand it. This is like coming down another row when we do division. All right, so I need a total of negative 10 P squared. So I'm at negative five. How many more do I need to get to negative 10? I need another negative five. And now if this is negative five P squared, what times P gives me negative five P squared? Well, I need a P to give me the P squared and a negative five to get me that negative five. All right, and now think about if this is negative five P, P and this is negative five, what will go here? 20, five P, because we get negative five times negative five gives me 25. And then the P gives me the P. All right, adding on another column we will need to do because we're not quite done until we get to the number in the bottom right, we're not done. So then I add another negative five P because I need to get down to positive 20 
and this gives me a negative 5, giving me a positive 25 here. Now, folks, think about it. Do I have a remainder? Yes, I do, because the, the constant here is not equal to the constant here. So I have a remainder. What is my remainder? My remainder is 1. So the quotient is here. The remainder is here. Let's write this out. Our answer is p squared minus 5p minus 5 plus 1 over p minus 5. All right. Again, the remainder is the number you get. Again, in this case, it's usually going to be a number over what you are dividing by the divisor. All right, here's another we try. Again, my apologies, I'm gonna ax this. Help me set it up. So, thinking about it, I'm gonna start with what kind of box? At the very minimum, I'm gonna start with a box with how many rows? Two rows. What's gonna go on the left? V plus three. All right, so think about it. How am I gonna start off? What goes up here? This is gonna be V cubed. And so thinking about what do I need to put up here for this to work? This needs to be V squared. So V squared times V gives me V cubed, which makes this 3V squared. Okay, I do need to add on. I got to keep going. And remember, until you get a just only a number in here, a number, no letter, you have to keep going. So I need to get negative 14V. I'm at 3V. How many do I need to subtract to get down to negative 14? That's going to be negative 17 v squared 3 minus 17 oh and i just made a mistake there because i didn't want v's v's i wanted v squareds so we don't want negative 17 we want negative 5 my mistake because 3 minus 5 is negative 2. sometimes happens and you know what it's okay we make mistakes this becomes negative 5v right because negative 5v times v gives me negative 5v squared okay now we get this box. What's going to go in this box, folks? Based on what we know, it will be negative 15v. Do we need to add another box, uh, another column, rather? Yes, we do, because the fact that we didn't get a number there means we're not done. Okay, and finally, what goes here? Well, I need neg I have negative 15v's. I need to get to negative 14. So I need 1v, and you can either write v or 1v. Either way, they're mathematically equivalent, so I would not, I personally would not be picky. And I'm going to tack on a 1, because 1 times v gives me 1v, and 1 times 3 gives me 3. Now, this is a tricky one, right? This one is going to have a remainder of what? Let's set up the equation. So the 3 that I get plus my remainder has to take me to negative 5. So as it turns out, what I actually get is negative 8. So someone in class asked a really good question. Could the remainder be negative? Absolutely. If you need to subtract to get from the constant you get in the box down to the constant in your, divide, in your, in your dividend, that is completely OK. We're not used to this because in a, in a um, arithmetic problem where we need to do long division typically if we're working with natural numbers or positive numbers you usually have a positive remainder so not used to necessarily seeing a negative but it's okay so we're going to write our answer as what the first part of our answer will be v squared minus 5v plus 1 and then how's the next part going to look well, you actually have two options. You can either write plus negative 8 
over v plus 3, or you could write it like this, v squared minus 5v plus 1, or you can move the minus and do 8 over v plus 3. Either one of these is mathematically equivalent, so I would accept either answer. Now folks, in a moment I am going to turn it over for you to try one, so please be very, very sure you're understanding what's going on here. And then in a moment, we will move on again for that one for you to try. All right, folks, here is a little you try. So again, I, I super duper encourage you to go back and review anything we've done previously. But what I need you to do is please take a minute to pause the video, try to execute this division problem. And then when you're ready, unpause and you can see what I got. All right, so I'm super excited to go over this. So again, we're gonna set up our box. Now, if you know what kind of the dimensions, you can do it. So as it turns out, I do need two rows and this is another way to do it, but you are gonna end up having a total of three columns because you're gonna have something squared, something X squared, plus something X plus or minus a number. Here, remember you're gonna set your X minus seven. So leading term in the top, what gives me that leading term? It is gonna be X squared. I distribute here to the seven and I get seven X, negative seven X squared. I need a total of negative 13 of them. So this needs to be negative six X squared, making this negative six X. This gives me 42 X because negative six times negative seven is uh, positive 42. I need to put negative two X here. So these combine to a positive 40. And then this needs to be a negative two, negative two times X is negative two X. This puts a 14 in this box. And then because these are different, I will have a remainder. The remainder is going to be equal to positive four because when you do 14 plus four, you get 18. And this leaves my answer as X squared minus six X minus two plus four over X minus seven. Okay, so again, please, please, please make sure you understand what I did here as we will soon be moving on to the final question for you to do. All right, one last one, let's crank this out. So you can see in many ways, this is similar to what we just did. Please take a moment, help me out, make the most of this, pause the video. Please try to solve this division problem. And then in a moment you can unpause and see what I got. All right, let's take it away. So again, uh, let's say that you didn't know the dimensions, you would set up a one by two box and you put your X minus four in. Remember you start with your leading term, X cubed. So this needs to be X squared. So these multiply to X cubed, making this negative four X squared. As this is negative four X squared, this needs to be positive nine X squared. So that the X squareds add up to five. Now, if this is negative, if this is nine X squared, this needs to be positive nine X. So nine X times X is nine X squared. That means this is negative 36 X because nine times negative four is negative 36. We're not done because we can see we didn't just get a number. Let's add in another column. Now, negative 36 X plus four X will give me the negative 32 I'm looking for, making this negative four and then uh, rather positive four because negative 36 plus four, so it's a positive four and that would give me negative 16. We can see again, there will be a remainder because these are not the same. So the remainder, well, let's think about it. If we have negative 16 and we add the remainder, we should end up with negative seven. 
So we'll do the math and add 16 on both sides. And that gives you me a remainder of nine. You don't have to do it this way. If you, you're welcome to count it out if you like. Again, the key is I just need you to find the correct remainder. So the final answer in this final problem, x squared plus 9x plus 4 plus 9 over x minus 4. All right, folks. So I really, really hope you found this video to be helpful. I hope that it provided you with some explanations and some helpful extra practice, um, as well as kind of thinking about what vocab do we need to know, where are these things coming from, and I really hope you're able to make the most of this as we prepare to move on. Um, and you know, I know this is difficult stuff, so keep the questions coming, keep positive, and remember, you can do it. All right, until next time, everyone, have a wonderful day.